Dr. Vaishnavi, your ENT faculty at the Unacademy platform. Uh, today we are going to discuss three common instruments that we use in ENT. These three are instruments that you will find in every ENT clinic, in every ENT specialist uh, office. So these three instruments are very commonly used. So let's begin with the first one. The first instrument that I'm going to introduce to you is the speculum called as the Tobicum's nasal speculum. So you can see this speculum is made out of steel. And this particular speculum has a hooked end and there is an end which has blades. So the hooked end of this particular specimen is held in the index finger of the non-dominant hand. So if you are a right-handed person, you will hold it in the non-dominant hand. And then you are going to take your middle finger and the ring finger to squeeze the blades of the speculum. So now with this blades of the speculum which are pinched inwards, this speculum is inserted into the vestibule of the nose. So once you enter the vestibule of the nose, the speculum is released and once the speculum is released, it will widen the vestibule area of the nose, allowing you to examine into the nasal cavity. So this particular instrument to become nasal speculum is used for performing anterior rhinoscopy. It can be used for both the purposes, for diagnostic purposes and for therapeutic purposes. But diagnostically, it is used for doing anterior rhinoscopy to see the septum, to see the lateral wall of the nose, if there is any deviated nasal septum, hypertrophy of the turbinates, to see if there is any foreign body in the nose, to see if there is a mass or a polyp in the nose. So for performing anterior rhinoscopy, this instrument is used commonly in every OPD. Then this is also used for therapeutic purposes like removal of the foreign body, which is why the reason is that we hold this instrument in the non-dominant hand to open the vestibule and close the vestibule. While your dominant hand can go inside and take the foreign body out, you can do a probe test with the dominant hand. You can do a packing if there is a patient with epistaxis. If you want to inject into the nose, you can do it with this. If you want to do an antral wash, you can do with the dominant hand. So these are all therapeutic procedures that you can do with this particular instrument. So it is an aid perform for performing the anterior rhinoscopy. Now you can hold these blades to open it in either vertical direction or in the horizontal direction. So you can open the vestibule horizontally like this or vertically like this. So this is the importance of this particular instrument called as the Tobicum's nasal speculum. So the next instrument that we are going to understand is the lac tongue depressor. This lac tongue depressor has a flat end as you all can see and it has got a bent end. So there is a bent end and there is a flat end. There is always a confusion as to which end has to be held. So the end that is bent is held and the end that is flat is used to depress the tongue. So when we use this instrument, which hand to use it? You can choose to use it in the left hand or the right hand, but usually it is again the non-dominant hand where we use this instrument. So this instrument is usually held in the left hand and you take fulcrum of the chin of the patient and then they depress the tongue depressor by only depressing the anterior two thirds of the tongue. You don't go towards the posterior one third of the tongue of the patient because when you touch the posterior one third of the tongue, there might be a gag reflex that might cause the patient to vomit and the patient might get uncomfortable. So to prevent that gag reflex, you have to make sure that it is depressing the anterior two thirds of the tongue, which will enable you to visualize the uvula, the anterior pillars, the tonsils and the oropharynx as well. So this instrument is used for the examination of the oral cavity and the oropharynx. It is used for retracting the lips, retracting the cheeks. It is used for eliciting gag reflex. Now you want to know the function of the cranial nerve, 9th cranial nerve, 10. And if you want to know the afferent and efferent are working, functioning well, you want to see the palatal elevation, you want to see the gag reflex, you want to see the sensory component of the glossopharyngeal nerve is functional or not, you can again use this particular tongue depressor which is called as lac tongue depressor. This can be used to perform a simple test called as a squeeze test. So if there is a peritonsillar abscess or a tonsillar abscess or a palatal abscess, you just want to gently push and see if there is any pus that is going to ooze out from the 
lesion so you can use this instrument for also that this is used for injecting uh, drugs into the oropharynx say there is a patient with submucosal fibrosis of the palate you want to inject intralesional steroid now you will depress the tongue and you will inject the intralesional steroid into the soft palate so it has got various uses for diagnostic as well as therapeutic purposes so this instrument that we have commonly is called as the lag tongue depressor the next instrument that we are going to talk about is this particular instrument that we use for ear examination or the external auditory canal examination this is called as the hartmann's oral speculum or a oral speculum you can just remember it as an oral speculum so this oral speculum is basically inserted into the external auditory canal so that you are able to visualize the canal and the tympanic membrane now how do you insert this particular speculum so the first step would be to pull the pinna upwards backwards and outwards now once you pull pull the pinna upwards backwards and outwards you are making the canal a straight canal normally the canal is s shaped so we are making it straight by doing this maneuver now after we make the canal straight you will use this particular speculum and insert into the external auditory canal of the patient and rotate it in the clockwise direction only until you are in the cartilaginous portion of the external auditory canal you won't go up to the bony portion as this may result in pain to the patient because bony portion is very very sensitive and that can cause extreme pain to the patient so this is inserted only up to the cartilaginous portion of the external auditory canal now what are the uses of this oral speculum which we use commonly the first thing is when you want to visualize the tympanic membrane usually because of the tortuous course of the canal tympanic membrane may not be visualized completely but through the speculum it will give you a good visualization of the tympanic membrane so it is used for visualization of the external auditory canal and the tympanic membrane that is the diagnostic use what is the therapeutic use of this instrument this instrument is used for removal of wax removal of fog, in body for probing if there is a lesion in the external auditory canal like an oral polyp this can be used for surgical procedures like when you are doing a myringotomy or a myringoplasty a stepidectomy or a stepidotomy it can be also used for doing injections like infiltration of the external auditory canal prior to a surgery we use this instrument so this instrument that you have is the oral speculum there are various types of oral speculum the one that we are talking now is the hartmann's oral speculum thank you